Today, we're gonna go over how you can mend your own ply sheets and save yourself some money. I hate when this happens. You come out to the barn and you see your horse has been playing a little too hard out in turnout. Luckily, this is definitely something that you can DIY and repair it yourself, saving you the cost of a new fly sheet. Let's get started. Okay, so this is what you need. I've got some thread and I've got some needles. Okay, so when it comes to thread, this is going to sound weird, but it's worth a trip to the craft store to get yourself some decent quality thread. This is a Guterman thread. It's a good brand. There are others, um, but if you use what you can get at the dollar store, it's going to have so much lint. You're going to have a devil of a time trying to thread your needle and it'll break on you all the time while you're trying to do any sewing. So get yourself some good quality thread and it'll save you a lot of grief. You'll have this needle that looks like this with the thread and it's knotted. Next, look at your rip and whoop, if you've got a bunch of dangly stuff, go ahead and trim that off. Oh, I missed some and trim this off too. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just going for something tidy where you don't have giant clumps of fabric. I made this mistake the first time, but just don't be stingy with your thread. This is from finger to finger is my thread stretched out and it is doubled. So that's a lot of thread. Just save yourself a lot of grief. Get like two, three feet of thread when it's doubled. So that's a lot, but it just makes it so much easier. Get a lot of thread. The next thing you're gonna do so I just put my finger at the bottom and tighten it up. Now, depending on what part of your sheet is messed up, but here, the fabric is naturally, like the way it was constructed is it's turned over like this. So I'm just gonna follow that and have it be turned in and just continue that on my repair. Next, take your needle Stick it through. Now this repair job is not going to be maybe the prettiest, but it will be effective. Then when you get to the top, put your needle through the loop and pull. Now you need to keep the fabric folded over so you're following the way it was made. It's looking like this, and we're going to continue down, keep that fabric folded in, and we're going to keep sewing. So as I'm going along, you can see that my stitches are they're pretty close together, and so I'm not worried about having them literally lay right next to each other, but I do purposely try and have them be close together because otherwise you're going to end up with gaps and your sheet could kind of open back up. In terms of the depth from the end of the fabric to how far in you go, I try and keep it pretty short. You just look at your fabric and try and make it 
short enough that it's, you know, unobtrusive, but big enough that it will hold everything together. Now, I did not start with a long enough piece of thread. I just used what was already on my needle. So, but it's important that when you're doing this, when you need to tie off, don't wait till you're down this close to the needle because if you do that, you won't have enough to finish and secure it. So when you get down to Oh, this is probably two, you know, three inches. And when you get down to about three inches, that's when you should stop just so that you have enough room on the thread to tie it and secure it. I have my needle going through the fabric. I'm going to put the needle in front of the thread instead of behind it and pull it through. So that makes this little knot little tiny knot right there. I'm going to put the needle in front. Come on. I'm going to put the needle, oh, don't cut your hip, in front of the thread and pull it through so it makes a little knot. And you can see the difference going down. Now I have this uh, vertical thread instead of just going through. Then I'm going to cut with my scissors. Now I'm going to take my two ends and tie it in a knot like you do when you would tie your shoelace. And I'm going to double knot it that way. One of the other things I do just to make sure that I save myself any grief later is if you have to get more thread, wherever I finished, I start again I don't start below I start up a couple of stitches because again this this repair is not necessarily intended to be the super prettiest but it I want it to be super functional and not unravel so instead of starting below I start up a couple stitches just to reinforce and be stronger so instead of starting down here I'm gonna start up here to keep the thread <laughs> from getting tangled so I've hooked it gently around my finger, carefully pulling it taut, and that way it doesn't get tangled. And how much fabric should you fold over? Well, if you fold it in too shallow, all of the fabric that's unraveled will be caught up here, and one, it'll be messy and difficult to sew, and two, if you're trying to sew through these unraveled edges, it won't catch you need to fold over enough so that when you put your needle through, you're catching solid woven fabric and not loose edges. Because again, the loose edges just won't catch. So it needs to be folded over enough so that you're sewing together two solid pieces of fabric. So down to the bottom, making my loop, but instead of doing it separate, I'm gonna pull, easy. Would you hold still? Okay, but instead of doing it like I would otherwise, I'm going to just pull the needle down through the middle so it makes a little knot. Done that twice, and then I'm going to cut the ends and double knot it twice again. Hold your needle, cut that thread, give yourself plenty of tail. Then I go ahead and trim off the edges and I like to leave half an inch to an inch because again this is not we're not doing sewing for prettiness we're just really trying to get a functional repair on a horse fly sheet um, and you want to make sure that you leave some edges because if it's too short the, any knots that you've untied will unravel themselves and you don't want that because 
this was the longest repair I've literally ever had to make on a horse blanket. <laughs> and it was a pain in the butt. So I'm glad to have done it, and I'd much rather have this on the fly sheet and keep using it um, than have to spend money and buy a new one. So leave a little bit of edges, leave half an inch to an inch, so that your knots don't come undone. That literally is the, <laughs> the biggest repair I've ever had to do on any blanket, but looking good.